Happy day. Let's see. Can I just... How do I send that stuff to the stash so I can see it all easier? Whoa, that's not what I want. I guess this is the easiest... Wait, hold on. Can I, like, control click? Alt click? Shift click? Ah, shift click does it! Nice. No problem. All right. Let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ray of fire is nice. You hold the ray and it keeps doing damage. Oh, I didn't realize that. This game is like a D&D slash Pathfinder light. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so... I got 590 gold now. For 500 gold, I can hire a level 2 adventurer. Hmm. I'll come back to that in a minute. Oh, wait, we were told to rest Hello. at the end, right? Uh, like a room. Rest in the common room is free. Let's do that. There's more party members you can get here. Yeah, I remember one guy in town. The, the, the blonde warrior guy. I vaguely remember him. Yeah, but a merc I can, I can design to be whatever class I want. So it's tempting. It is tempting. Inns allow characters to rest without using camping supplies. Cheap rooms are usually available, but if you have copper to spend, you may consider the more expensive options. The bonuses they provide last a long time and affect the entire party. All right. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with suffocation, suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of the Gilded Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face is shriveled inward like moldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Gross. Suddenly, her head snaps up and her eyes open, and they are empty, and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts, and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watcher. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. You called. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she's truly dead. Hmm. I feel like if I'm gonna get a Merc, I need to do it now, because they're missing out on all the other XP that I'm getting. Yeah? Hmm. Greetings. Here, hold on. Save game. Good day, stranger. So, the other builds I liked the look of that I was looking at was a DPS chanter and a, um, what was the other one? A cipher. Let's see. Is this one when reduced below 50% endurance, fire god like glow like metal of forging DVR and doing a small amount of fire damage to any creature which then melee. Is that the reason? The builds I was looking at gave a recommendation for DPS Chandler to be a fire godlike. What about a meh? I remember really liking moon godlikes when I played this game. When they get to 75, 50, and 25% health, they emit healing waves. Those might stream the next one below half. When Death God like attack damage under 25, their damage is increased. Keep in mind that when you go bigger party of the game plan for you, you level up slower. Oh, is the experience split, Fallen Wizard? Is the experience divided? 
it's not just duplicated to the other people. Because, you, you know, games do... Ga ga different games do it different ways. It is split in this game. Okay. Alright, well, then I'll, sure. I'll try not doing it for now. Um, let's change the formation. There we go. Oh, that's stealing. Okay, so it has the little ninja mask that's stealing. Tenfrith! How'd you, how'd you like it when I, when I saved you that one time? Ah, it's you, my savior! He makes a sweeping gesture to indicate the kitchen around. It's so good to be back. Do not think I will let this go unrewarded. I have decided that you have earned the right to learn one of my most closely guarded secrets, my dearest recipe. After this, you will eat nothing else. Savory pie. A savory pie to keep you hale and hearty. May it serve you well in your travels. Okay. Orland server, villager, 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 drunkard. Strong Bright Blade and Selen Vertivo. As you near, you feel a vibrant, vibrant history contained in the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Okay, I vaguely remember this. Now that I'm like seeing dead people, I occasionally will pass people that have interesting pasts and you can click them and read the story. It's not really part of the main quest. It's kind of for fun was what I felt like. Um, I'll read a couple of these, but I, I won't do every one of them. You see a woman emptying her satchel onto her bed, taking stock of her inventory. Potions, bandages, tinctures, and herbs are scattered throughout her room haphazardly. She bites her lip, head tilted to the side, considering. She begins to repack one item after the other, careful deliberation undercut by shaking hands. Each item has a clearly marked place, but no matter how she repacks it, she isn't satisfied. The shaking worsens as she empties it out once more, one hand held to her mouth. Tears eke from her eyes as she gives up all semblance of order and shoves everything she can in the satchel, grabbing it and running out of the bare house. Straightening her back, she walks to the docks, chin high, eyes hard and red. A gangly young elf offers his condolences, but she can't see him for the ocean ahead of her. She wanders the docks, offering her services as a doctor to anyone who will listen, anyone heading out on high tide. Less than an hour later, she watches her childhood disappear in the distance, a tiny speck on an island, and tries not to jump. So someone she cared about died and she left town? Uh, you can do mercs and kick those pre-mades. Adding merc then would naturally gain pre-made, etc. Or just go solo, though from what I remember, any difficulty over normal is quite hard to solo. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking to solo. But pre-mades have their stories, which some people like. Uh, you see a group of young men standing around a makeshift practice target. The man stand this man stands in the middle of them explaining the construction and use of a bow. He holds it up, pointing out each part as he speaks about it and what it does. He then walks away from the target, telling them to remain where they are and take his place about 200 feet away. He carefully lines up his shot, explaining what he is doing as he does, and lets the arrow fly. It hits the target dead center, much to the surprise and delight of the boys near it. He smiles, walking towards the boys, talking about proper span stance and how to most effectively hold a bow. A noise comes from the tree line near the practice venue and he stops, scanning the woods, blue eyes squinting against the sun. A shadow moves, making its way through the forest behind them. He draws an arrow and lines up the shot, carefully tracking the motion of the hidden creature. Loosing the arrow, he wastes no time and quickly grabs another. The boys spin, watching the arrows fly in the forest, immediately lost among the trees. There's a sudden explosive movement in the undergrowth as a deer erupts from the tree line running across the edge of the clearing. The boys laugh, turning to joke with the man about his lousy shot. They stop talking, seeing him holding the bow and leading the deer with a knocked arrow. They drop to the ground as he looses the last arrow, which flies through and strikes the deer right behind its shoulder, piercing heart and lungs and dropping it dead almost instantly. The boys stare at the deer for a few seconds, then, back, then slowly back to turn at the man, newfound respect in their eyes. He smiles again and breathes a quiet sigh of relief. Okay, so there was something spooky in the woods. <laughs> uh, I didn't even catch that. It was this Sturm from Dragonlance, Zurin. Carouser. In gas. I'll have oh, it in no Let's not rob him. New map discovered. The Black Hound. 20 XP earned. 
Wait, that's... No, I'm sorry. That happened when I zoned in here. Okay, so every one of those people has their own little tail. Lockpicks required three, because I don't have there, anyone done. with uh, actual lockpicking yet. Blackhound. Uh, Hound stares intently at the covered window, head cocked as if waiting to hear a particular sound. It looks up when you approach and whines a low note, tail wagging slightly. Pet the dog. The dog's tail thumps happily against the floorboards. Okay. They just kickstarter rewards, so you don't need to do the soul stuff. Gotcha. I remember thinking it seemed like just uh, riders having fun, but I didn't know that they were kickstarter. Alright, so I need to talk to the dead lady in the tree. As weird as that sounds. You did hear a dog thing. Ah, here we go. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bow that sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light in the surroundings, but there's a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach out. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind of focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman, and when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here? Have you come here for me, dear? Sorry. Or have you gotten lost? That was your line. Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes. How are we talking? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps <laughs> it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. <laughs> I think I survived a be a whack. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold them. Those days are all behind me, no? I need to understand something that's happening to me. She nods a look of pity on her face as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, 
yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. So I see dead people. And sometimes That's the short version they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories and even their honor can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. What do you mean when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Okay. All right. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. She closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. Mukluk was granted Crucible of the Soul. Party gained 934 XP. Total quest XP, 1400. Aloth looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you alright? You seem lost just now. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. He folds his arms. That's good to know, but I don't suppose you could tell me what that was all about. I'm a watcher. His arched eyebrows recede into his hood. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin, and I expect that explains how you survived a biowack. Hmm... In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. What do you know about Watchers? Only that they're rare and that they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions, he coughs, as you just demonstrated. Okay. Seventeen and a half. Uh, a deer. The smell of pipe smoke at once earthly and sweet winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin where you find a broad man with straw-colored hair Leaning against a mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his hands, his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. I'm sorry? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you oughta. What are you talking about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, it might as well be 19. <laughs> Don't think I'd put you much higher than 22, 23 tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. What makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? He looks at you for a moment, his brow arched and his smirk broadens. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack, I took you for a Radric at first. Impossible! I don't drool half as much as a Radric. Ha! You're already familiar. Still, you'll have to forgive my curiosity. Around here, we prefer to turn a blind eye to our dead. Um... Do you know what a Watcher is? Careful, friend. Best not use that word around here. There'd be any number of Radric bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, Animancers, Watchers... Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, Radric especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. None taken. No offense. Good, they don't mean it personal when they hang folks here. I have to remind the myself. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. Why? Did, what does your town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. 
That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethys. Gross. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethys isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, and then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethys worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe So the legacy is the thing where the kids are being born without souls. Brother, but he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. Uh, Aloth glances at you. You can see why I was eager to leave. Um... Alright, well, farewell. Mm, I missed something. There's a way to have him join the party, I know there is. If you're, ne if you're next to be hanged, what are you still doing here? He gives a half smile, drinking mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out, just haven't figured out where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there that don't think Wadewin's legacy started with Wadewin. We could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Cade Nua. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger. And a strange one at that. A strange stranger. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. There's a fine reason if I ever heard one. All right, then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. As long as you're not the one picking the sights. All right. Hey. All right, a deer. What's your deal? Um, ba -ba -ba. level three fighter. Decent stats. Nothing really amazing. Um, can I see where his feet are? Constant recovery, defender, plus two enemies engage, minus five deflection, fighting spirit, knockdown, second win, okay. So let's do defensive and aggressive. How may I help? What's your AI? Just have you set for do be damage, defensive. Okay. So I think he'll do two arcane assaults per encounter and then just start wanding unless I actually sure. manually tell him to use his per rest abilities. Hey. Sure. Okay. Uh we I think that's all of the extra people I can have join my party from this town that I can remember from my brief stint in this game way back when. I know there's like a person for every single class eventually, but I think this is all of the ones I meet in this section of town. It's a load screen, guys. Take five. Okay, it's done. Oh, wait, wait. Don't steal her stuff. She's right freaking there. Alfra. A dear Woodian, a dear Woodwin, a dire wooden woman is standing in front of the fireplace, humming a quiet tune to herself or perhaps to her unborn child, for she is clearly quite pregnant. She turns her head slightly as you enter. Welcome. Uh, well, I was starting to think, oh, I'm sorry, I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile. Can I help you? Uh, who are you expecting? My sister Kaliska. Oh, no is traveling with one of the caravans. She sent a letter before she came, said she was going to pay her way by working as a guard for the caravan master. She always was a tough one. I don't suppose you've seen her on the road or the caravan, perhaps it's Master Odemos. <sighs> the caravan was attacked. We escaped, but Kaliska was caught in a biowak. 
She covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide with horror. For a few moments, she could manage nothing but a strangled, voiceless gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew. I told her it was a dangerous path to take. Kaliska was always so certain she could take on any danger. Oh, my poor sister. I'm sorry, stranger. I just can't believe she's gone. If only I hadn't called her here. If I had, hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Her face crumples. A solitary tear slides down her cheek. Quit your sniveling. Oh my gosh. Why did you send for her? I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kaliska as much as I could, but all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in Gilded Vale has been soulless, empty. Okay, leave the city then. It happened to so many mothers, and Lord Raedric, he's exiled all of them, calling it a sign of the gods' disfavor. With my hat hoard gone, I don't know how I'd manage if I lost my home too. I hoped Kaliska could help me. They say Ranga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child becoming hollowborn, but she moved south to Anslog's Compass two seasons ago. The journey's too far for me. I can't make it as I am, but I don't have anyone else now. With Kaliska gone, please, can you help me? Um, uh, I'll think about it if I go that way. I... She nods, though her expression falls. That's all I can ask, thank you. She takes a shaky breath. I'm sorry, I just need a moment. She turns away. Alright, quest. All right, I'm going to tab out for a quick second here and check on things. Uh, just, we don't have any loading screen breaks to do this in. I'm going to do our quest mode thing real fast to uh, see about getting some free sub points for giving someone a free subscription. Usually we do this during the uh, loading screens, but yeah, <laughs> it's already done. Is this website going to be running slower than Pathfinder right now? I wonder if they're doing maintenance or something. Okay, well, it's... Oh, wait, there it goes. Okay, we'll just leave that reloading for now, and I'll come back to that in a little bit. Okay, we've done this area here. Let's run down here. That looks like a plant we can grab, and we're going to click on this and take the earlier advice we were given to try to zone out at every exit to open up the map. So now we can see Mogren's Fork. Same thing. Versant's bell. Hmm. Some steps going underground. Some kid. Beneath the vines are crude carvings of a sun rising over three stars. Kickstarter. Villager. Same area on the map. More Kickstarters. Oh. Wee! Give me that wee! Pilgrim's Crown. Same thing. Let's see. Lots of cows. Estern Wood just got unveiled. Barath's Bell Plant. Oh, the town, when we're not talking, we can certainly open up a town pretty quickly, can't we? Oh, I didn't expect them to path that way. More Kickstarters. Oh, there's a plant. Springberry. Uh, let's dive in this house like Link and see what we can find. Well, that's loading. Snow and wind have combined to create one of the worst blizzards ever recorded. Do you soldier on or do you make camp and try to wait it out? <laughs> Last time I hit soldier on and I died. So let's hit make camp and see if it gives us some uh, sub points. Nice! Finally, the storm relents, but you end up with frostbite and need your foot amputated. Get used to being called stumpy. Yeah, it's things like happy tree friends. You always, something terrible happens. But sub points means we're a little bit closer to the next free Twitch subscription to give away. So uh, click rest and don't click push forward in the blizzard if you guys do that today. Quickly and quietly. Um, these are Kickstarter people. Okay. 
Most creatures will detect a character just after they appear at the edge of the fog of war. If you want to sneak up on enemies, use scouting mode. Got it. More spring berries. Gilded Vale Home, 30 XP discovered. Interesting. So we got XP just for, like, walking into that guy's house. 